Welcome to this evening, uh, September 8th, Muskogee Municipal Authority. Roll call, please. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Marlon Coleman. Here. David Jones. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Leanne Langston. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. And uh, approval of minutes, uh, MMA minutes from August the 11th, special call meeting, and uh, MMA regular minutes from the August 25th. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion regarding the minutes. Move for approval. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Uh, yes. And the motion carries. Item number one. Consider approval of the Muskogee Municipal Authority Report of Claims for the month ending August 31st, 2014. Welcome, Mr. Hall. <laughs> we have Gene Kingston on there. I'm assuming that Mr. Brown is going to take care of that. Then. Yeah, this is just a report of claims for the month ending August 2014. Move, Move for approval. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. And that concludes the agenda for the Muskogee Municipal Authority. We will now go to the City Council. Agenda. Invocation this evening will be by Wayne Johnson. And then you will join us in the flag salute. You would join me in prayer. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, as we come to you this evening, uh, we're so thankful, dear Lord, for all the blessings that you've given us. Dear Lord, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have uh, to come here this evening, dear Lord, and take care of the business of this community. Dear Lord, we ask for your wisdom tonight in the decisions that we make, and we thank you, dear Lord, for the many blessings that you have given us. Uh, we ask, dear Lord, that you would be with each and every one of our employees uh, as they go throughout their business days, that you would protect them and guide them. These things we ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Please join us in the flag salute. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. James Scully. Here. Dan Hall. Here. Marlon Coleman. Here. David Jones. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Leanne Langston. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Now we are accounted for. Now uh, minutes from the August 19th and August 25th meetings. Are there conditions or corrections? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. Uh, consent agenda. Is there anything anyone would like to move to regular agenda? If not, we'll consider a uh, motion regarding the consent agenda. Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion regarding consent agenda? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Regular agenda item number six. Hold a public hearing and take action on the approval of an ordinance rezoning the property located on north of Dayton Lane or Dayton Street on North C Street, more particularly described in the ordinance, from D, Multifamily Residential District, to F, General Commercial District, and if approved, authorize staff to revise the official zoning map of the city to reflect said change. Mr. Garvin, and we'll consider ourselves to be in a public hearing. Mayor, members of the council, the Muskogee County EMS is requesting approval to rezone 0.16 acres from the D, Multifamily Residential District, to the F, General Commercial District. The property is located north of Dayton Street on North C Street. The applicant has stated the reason for rezoning the property is to allow a storage facility for the emergency response equipment. Looking at the existing zoning land use within the area, starting with the site itself. Currently, the site is zoned D multifamily and is undeveloped property. North is also zoned D multifamily and is also undeveloped. There is a carport on the property and fenced in, but it is not being currently being used for anything. South is owned F General Commercial and is undeveloped property, which is property also owned by EMS. East is owned D Multifamily and there's vacant apartments. And West is owned G Light Industrial and is the location of the Collision Center. 
There is an alley that currently separates or did separate lots seven and eight. Muskogee County EMS previously closed that alley. The reason why they closed the alley is because, as I stated previously, they own lot seven. That is the location where they're going to put the storage facility. The reason why they wanted to rezone this property is they needed it for maneuvering and access to the proposed storage facility. The land use map indicates commercial zoning within the area. This request complies with the comprehensive plan and the land use map, and it's been recommended for approval by Planning Commission staff and the Public Works Authority. Be glad to answer any questions. Any questions of Mr. Garvin? Anyone in the audience to hear to speak to this item? Will not close the public hearing. Council have any questions? Move for approval. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. Item number seven. Consider approval of a citywide reorganizational plan or take other necessary action. Uh, Mr. Brown. Yeah, thank you very much, Mayor and Council. Um, just wanted to follow up with you regarding my request. Um, as you know, last week we discussed uh, a reorganizational plan. Phase one is a adoption of a city or organizational chart, and uh, specifically three new departments. Actually, one is being reestablished called engineering. Uh, the other one is a, re a new business, a new department called retail business enterprise. And the other one is... Um, called customer and support services and so I'm asking that the reorganization plan be approved um, subject to that um, that concludes my presentation I have a quick question and I should have asked before this and but I'm bringing it up now are you aware that our emergency management director is also CLEAT certified he's a police officer and he works with the police officers on some of that stuff and he's also already housed in this building is that going to, can we like leave him underneath the police department for that purpose? I mean, I'm just, I know that you had this all planned out and I'm throwing a wrench at it at the last second. I don't really want to, but I just thought about that. Yeah, I think, I think it's doable. Um, what you, what you'd be approving is the departments and I think I can address, I think I can do that, but let me, let me evaluate it. I could probably get it done. I've heard some people, some similar comments concerning the same thing that they, they thought it would be better if he was under the police instead of the fire so yep. or what it's worth so, so I guess I'm, yep. oh, go ahead Dan I'm sorry I'm just sorry to throw a wrench in at that okay. last it's not a wrench it's just a tweak I, I had one other question and uh, it's not because of the editorial the other day but uh, the newspaper you know sometimes they don't know everything that's going on but uh, a lot of times they do bring up good points that uh, of interest I like the plan I like decreasing the department heads right under you from 13 to 7. I think that allows it allows you to be a lot more manageable and to, and to take care of business the way we want it taken care of. Did you, I assume when you did this, because we're not supposed to talk to the department heads, we're supposed to go through you with everything. Did you visit with all the department heads when you were coming up with this? I mean, has this been pretty well accepted or is this just something that you think was the best thing for the city? Yeah, well, you know, it's one of those things that, you know, when you're involved in it, you know, this is something that you don't discuss openly with subordinates. Uh, this is something that, okay. that the mayor and city council and the city manager discuss, and these are the things that we go through when we discuss these items. Um, I have spoken with some of the department heads that would be impacted and, um, and definitely have looked at what the management team would look like moving forward. So there are a few that I have spoken with, but no, I didn't go to all 13 department heads to get their buy-in. Well, I know, I know we have a lot of experience under some of those department heads, and uh, I understand. I still like the plan. I was just curious. I do have, I have, as I've contemplated over this over the weekend, I have one issue, and I really, as far as the council, I think, I don't know if how up to date everybody is, but we're going to ask the city clerk's position and now to take over parks and recreation. And as we do that, I don't know if we've, that's our employee. The city clerk's our employee. And I think we need to talk privately with our city clerk to see what issues those it's going to be for. Because we're going to lose the animal control part, but parks and recreation is a significant portion of our employees. And as a council, when we do city clerk's job evaluations, 
we haven't set out any real guidelines of what we expect out of those what do we expect out of, out of the Parks and Recreation Department. So I think, plus, and I don't mean to be your, be the city clerk's agent, but if all of a sudden I'm going to pick up 100 employees, I'd kind of like to know what my, is there any extra compensation for me? So I would like to know, Mr. Tucker, if we could not take any action on this and put it on for an executive session in the next couple of weeks, that we could do an evaluation of the city clerk, set out what we expect those, what our expectations are for the, for those responsibilities so we can evaluate her because this is what this whole thing is, is about accountability. It's hard to hold her accountable if, if we haven't explained to her what we expect and what kind of compensation it's going to be. So that's, I'm, I'm right. like Mr. Jones, I, I like the process and the con consolidations, but I don't think we're doing the city clerk's office just, just any kind of justification by not at least sitting down with our, who we directly control. I mean, we hire four positions and that's one of them. And so if this doesn't work out, I really wouldn't like to be, you know, hold that too much against her. We move on somewhere else. So I'm real uncomfortable that we haven't discussed with her as a council. Well, I would you, like to I, I, I like to say something. You do know that, that uh, the city clerk also supervises revenue, animal control, I absolutely water, understand. water utility building. And I understand that's, that's, okay. the fit, oh. the best, yes, there is yes, some sir. parks and recreation that does through the aquatic park, the swim and fitness center. There's a lot of revenues that come through. Yep. But as the manager just states in his memos that this is about accountability, expectations, and I don't think as a council we've asked, told the city clerk what our expectations are going forward. I really don't think that's fair for that city clerk to say, okay, do your best job and we'll get back with you and if it's good enough. And to answer the question, uh, Mr. Gully, uh, you can discuss uh, the clerk's employment in executive session. However, you wouldn't be able to discuss the organizational chart in the broad spectrum. It has right. to, the executive session has to relate to an individual employee. Right. And I think that would do that because, again, I think there should be some, all of a sudden I've got another 100 employees and in the summer I've got 200 temporary employees. Guys, I don't know. I've <laughs> That's an awful lot of responsibility to say thanks, put it under your umbrella, and we'll go forward. Well, you know, I tried to bring this up in public works. I'm sorry. Okay. Go ahead. No, go, go ahead. I tried to bring this up in public works and finance, but it was explained to me that that responsibility is still Mr. Brown's. Yes. Remember when I brought it up and, and Roy sure. spoke up and said that you that Mr. Brown is still over administrating that, and I, I really – just bought off on it, whatever it was said. I don't remember what was said now. But. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I, mean I, I, I remember the conversation. I remember exactly what was discussed. And um, what I can say is that um, you know, there's still reorganization that needs to take place within the new departments. And so, you know, a department that was 100 plus employees could end up being half of that if we move into phase three of that plan, which is to centralized operations such as mowing, grass cutting, and those kinds of things, facilities and those kinds of things. So, you know, what 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 you're proving are departments. And granted, your point is well taken about the city clerk and how she fits in there, but that's something that was set up before I got here. Um, well, I realize that. And that's something that you guys need to resolve. And that's why I'm yeah. saying we need to yeah. take a step back. Would, would it be reasonable, council? Mr. Gilly, I don't know whether you'd be open to this thought or not, but... Would you be open to the idea of, of approving the organizational chart and then allow that before you move the people into those positions? No, if, if that's the idea is that because the, the Parks and Rec has revenue and that we think that fits underneath the city clerk's jurisdiction, I think the city clerk needs to know exactly where, where that's going to be because the rest of the departments I, are the city managers to appoint, hire, and that. It's this city council's to hire the city clerk's position, and I and we're the going to ones that be the ones that do her job evaluations and reviews, and I just think that we need to make sure that she understands what the job descriptions are and what it entails. My thinking, thank you, is that this is a first step, and 
this may not be totally perfect. It may be not be the, exactly the way things work out. We can change anything that happens. And I think you're right. There's going to be not only that position, but others that we're going to have to discuss in depth. And I, but I think we need to make this first step forward to start with a, a basic plan, a foundation to build on, and move from there. I, too, agree that we shouldn't just put a rubber stamp on this and say, this is the way it's going to be and take it or leave it. I think there's a lot of discussion that needs to be done. And personnel, expectations, and all of that uh, has to be a big part of us going forward from here. So I'm ready to move to the Other forward thoughts or on comments? this. Uh, one thing before we move forward. I mean, right now we're, we would be approving the organ, reorganizational structure. But before we start the implementation of the reorganizational structure, what I would like to see is if we could uh, put on evaluations on the agenda. So we could do an evaluation at this time before the reorganization is done. So we could evaluate though everyone in their current job description. How does that tie in with what we've already adopted, where we adopted the evaluations to take place in management in step one and then everybody in step two? Did we not already do that I think what, a month ago? Councilman Johnson, I th are you talking about the three direct reports to? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, I see that. The ones that directly report as their roles will change, I think it would only be appropriate kind of going with James's response we would I think it would be appropriate that we do a job evaluation at this time in their current role before it changes okay and when we move forward on this I would really like to know where we're going to pay these people at if we're going to meet them at the medium or if we're going to throw out there a high number and because right now I mean I can't say that up sure but I would like this I would like to keep this on the fair playing field and just not throw out big numbers to get people in here. I'd like to keep us where we're where everything's pretty on a level playing field. I don't want to just start saying, Oh, let's give them this high end of the salary and not meet other th needs that we have in this city. I'd like to have, see that too. Other qu uh, questions or comments? Is there a, I, mean, I would assume we've got two options with this uh, to entertain a motion or we would delay it and uh, have it on another meeting. And I guess we'd need that in form of a motion. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Well, I move that we take no action on this item. Okay. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any comments or discussion? Is there a reason that we need that that we should go ahead and take action? I mean, is there any emergency? There's no emergency, I understand, but is there any real need to act? I mean, is is this leading up to something that's going to stall something else? I didn't explain that right, but that's a question. Yeah. You. Well, I can I can just tell you that you made you made the reorganization contingent the positions contingent upon the reorganization being approved. So the the retail business enterprise um, um, director and some of those other key positions regarding economic development will be delayed. So depending on when you brought this item back, would delay all of those things, and because you you made a condition that this is subject to the reorganization plan, mm -hmm. I would make a recommendation that you know if your if your issue is. If, if what you're trying to accomplish is the parks and recreation customer service piece, set that aside and, um, and approve the organizational chart, or you can table it to a date certain. But, you know, I, I can do either one, uh, counselors, but my recommendation is what it is. I'd like to move forward with this so we can get the ball rolling, so we can move into some of the things that we've already discussed. And um, you know, at this point, that's where that's where I'm, I'm at. So, can I ask Councilor Gully a question? Sure. Is that, um, would it be better uh, or more feasible, particularly 
Um, when we think about the retail component, that we move forward with the director and table, the organizational plan as a whole. And that's fine with me. I'm just concerned that. Yeah, because I understand your concerns. Our, we're right. taking our employee and and almost kind of throwing them out there. Right. So the rest of the everything else, I'm fine with. Right. It's just that I think we need to <laughs> be do justice to our city clerk. Right. Because I, as I recall, the the major component that we were really trying to go forward with. Uh, on the immediate side, and this addresses Councilor Jones's concern as well, was that we did have that staff person available to begin mm -hmm. uh, to start working on the retail component. Yeah, and I'm not, that's not, not my intent. My right. intent is, is as, our, as a super <coughs> direct supervisor of the city clerk's office and the city manager mm -hmm. and the city attorney and the city judge, we need, we need to give them some the directions. Right. I understand that these would have to be changed by ordinance anyway. So if we if we went ahead and approved this plan, we still have ways to change pieces of it. And our city clerk says they don't want to do it. Well, I think we. My question. I mean, uh -huh. I hadn't even talked to Pam or the city then, clerk about this, but then we change the, the plan at that point. <laughs> we, I think we, I, we that's why I'm suggesting. We don't present the ordinance. You're, I think you're saying that we need to talk to our current city clerk. I understand. That's exactly what I'm yeah. saying. <laughs> uh, I understand that, but I think if we, we, that we still could go ahead and approve this. This is just a foundation, and any of this is going to have to be changed by ordinance. So we have the opportunity between now and when we present an ordinance to have done all of those things that you were asking about and what you were asking about and what David was asking about. Is that a possible deal, that we don't well, owe Pam to that accountability well, level? Well, the, the, charter, the charter doesn't require it be done by ordinance. It recommends or suggests that it be done by ordinance. It's appropriate that, it, that these changes be done by ordinance so that everyone knows what they are. Um, I have spoken with Ms. Bates um, about it, and um, you know, she, she didn't indicate to me that there was a, a significant issue. But, you know, again, she's your employee also. So I would just leave it there. Yep. yep. So my motion still stands that we don't take any action until the city council has addressed the city clerk. And do you have a recommendation on who and how that's going to happen? I think it's an executive session. Okay. At our next council meeting? Or whenever we might uh, want to set that up. We have a, a planned yeah, special call. Special call for Tuesday. <laughs> right, but if you're doing a special call on Tuesday at lunch, is everybody going to be available to participate? No, in it won't be at lunch. That's this Wednesday. Oh, okay. well, I'm sorry. I was thinking of Wednesday. <laughs> no, it'll yeah. be in conjunction with the Public Works and Finance. Okay. Meeting. All right. So, and I'd like to have that put on that well, special call, and then we still we have it ready to go. Can we everything else but that? Well, I don't know what it'll change your organizational chart after that. that. Yeah, it's going to have to change some way. But I mean, <laughs> I just want that one piece to be accepted. But I was just thinking, if we could do everything but that section, is that a possibility? So he can go ahead and move forward with what he needs to, and we can That's fine. work on pants. Is that a is that a deal? Can we do that? How that's, could we do that? That's what I would like. I mean, we 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 got a lot of moving pieces. We didn't go out and look for you know, recruit for these positions. You know, every delay is another delay. And, well, um, we said there was going to be six, six months, eight months, nine months, even a year. I mean, I'm not sure what another week and a half, two weeks makes a difference. But I, I'm agree with that. But again, I don't want the city clerk to be in that yeah. bad position saying this is <coughs> not for me. Just kind of cut her part off and talk about it later. <laughs> we'll just say specifically her position. Pam's position yeah. won't be until there's a, an agreeable situation that uh, both sides agree to which you, you could accept the structure and yes. not move the person and that's fine Roy right. you got us something um maybe <laughs> <laughs> um I think what you could do an appropriate motion would be to uh, move to approve the organizational chart subject to the staff evaluations and direct that uh, those evaluations be placed on uh, for executive session uh, at a special call meeting on Tuesday the 16th We already have a motion that we're going to have to vote yeah. on that one. Or withdraw it. Right. Read that again, Roy. I'm not sure that's accomplishing yeah. what I'm looking for. See, okay. We want to kind of not even let her be a part of this right now. Well, that's what the, 
Okay. Because it really is not until what the evaluation is. is what Read it again. I thought it did cover it. Uh, move to approve the organizational chart subject to staff evaluations and then to direct that those evaluations occur on Tuesday the 16th. Subject to. Yeah. Is that the exception that, if we're saying if all of our employees, Howard is out of town on the 16th. Is that true? So the 16th, yeah, I'm at the International City Managers Conference. So you can't accomplish all those on the 16th. Okay. Well, there's the City Council meeting on the following Monday. Which I think is exactly then, your point when you say we're just going to keep moving it back and moving it back. Well, we don't we have a special call for noon? I guess everybody can't make it, though. You can't. Right? Yeah. you got to have 48 hours. Though. Right. There's not time yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, the other thing, uh, to echo what uh, Leanne was mentioning, is that, you know, if this is approved tonight, it, it will require implementing ordinances uh, on some portion of it. Um, I don't know if that makes any difference or not. Um, or we could uh, make a motion to approve the organizational chart and then uh, subject that to the clerk's evaluation and then not have the other three uh, evaluations on for Tuesday night. I think that's not all I'm asking for is just to be, have, a, have a meeting with the city clerk and let her address her concerns or what we expect and that sort of thing. Would you amend the motion there accordingly? Let's hear what Mr. Tucker has to say. You have to the first motion and yeah, you, do, you do. two motions. Do what? You'll need to uh, withdraw your I, motion and then well, the I second. I want to hear what, what the second one sure. might be. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving up on it yet, brother. <laughs> well, you can always make it again. Uh, move to approve uh, the organizational chart uh, subject to uh, evaluation and discussion with the city clerk in, exec in executive session to be held on uh, September 16th. Oh, at the special call? Yes. Okay. I will remove my original motion. I think there was a second to that, too. There was. There is a second, and that was Mr. That. Marlin Coleman. I'm not seconding that. You're not well, well, your second. Oh, I removed my second. I'm okay. not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so moved. Now we've got a motion. Uh -huh. Okay. Do we have a second regarding Mr. Gully's present second. motion? We have a motion and a second. Is there discussion? <clears throat> Would you restate the motion, Mr. Tucker, for us? Uh, motion will be to move to approve the organizational chart uh, subject to evaluation and discussion with the city clerk in executive session to be held at a special call city council meeting on September 16th. Okay. Any other comments? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Gully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. No. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Leanne Langston? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? No. Mayor Coburn? Yes. Motion carries. Item number eight. Consider approval to authorize the solicitation of proposals for the marketing management and, if appropriate, operations of the Muskogee Civic Center and Roxy Theater or take other necessary action. Mr. Brown? Yes. Thank you, Mayor Council. We, we met last week on this item. Um, what what I'm asking is that, you know, I'd be authorized to do an RFP to mark um, Put out an RP to um, for the management and marketing of the Civic Center, and that while I'm doing that, I'd like to also do Roxy at the same time. But my goal would be to look at the marketing and management piece of the Civic Center. Okay. Questions or comments for Mr. Brown? Is is it does it make any bearing that the Civic Center is not ADA compliant? Because I know the building has so many issues as it is. I'm wondering, do we address that prior to going forward? Do we just move forward and then try to address? Well, you know, that's a, that's a good question, Robert. I can just tell you that um, the companies that are out there, they can do an assessment of the facility as part of their, of their agreement with you to let you know what building improvements need to be made, um, what kind of marketing strategy needs to be employed, and what kind of management that they need to have on site, their own general manager or whatnot. But, but this, um, just to make it clear, this this particular um, um, request does not involve removing employees or. I do um, have a question about part of your statement there. Sure. Uh, you kind of said how much it's going to cost to get it updated. Do we have any kind of idea how much extra money it's going to cost the city to update everything at that civic center? Have have we even looked into that at all? I don't have any information on that. This is just, um, you know, 
going out to, to get a proposal on what it would take. Um, the facilities part is going to be a separate issue altogether because that's still going to be repaired and re maintained by the city. Um, the program management piece, if that's what... Well, we're, my deal we're, is we're getting ready to spend a chunk of change on this the management part, yeah. and that's one thing. But then we're also going to come back in and throw a bigger chunk of change at getting that thing up and running right. Because if you look at the kitchen, we know that the kitchen's not anywhere near it needs to have anything there. Um, the facility, even though we repainted it several years ago and put some seats and stuff in and redid it, a lot of that needs to be redone and some of it needs to be repainted. There's just a lot of more things there than just a management company. And that's what I'm looking at. I'd like to know before I vote on this is how much this whole big ball is going to cost us. Because, I mean, I understand the yeah. management thing. Yeah. I just want to know how much the extras is going to cost because we we haven't updated it since then, but we're going to update it now. And I know we have to, but I'd just like to know what that, that's yeah. going to be. We don't. I don't have that information. I don't think we have that information. And that would be part of this RFP. What we can do, we could we could definitely go out and, and get an assessment done on our own. We'll pay for it to do so. Um, but that's, you know, I think if we can kill two birds with one stone by doing a, an a, you know, agreement with these guys and having them look at that, we can do that. Okay. We can do both at the same time. But but we can do that. Um, I don't know how much it'll cost, and I really don't know what what the industry standards are for running a civic center. And so I would need to get, you know, special assistance to help with that. So now we're just asking for RFPs. We're not really signing anything. At, at yeah, this point. I mean, this is this is. We're not obligated okay. to accept no. any do anything. RFPs yeah. or anything. Yeah. Okay. So we but, could be looking for some RFPs at the same time as we're looking at, at a facilities assessment yeah. to see what the cost might well, be. Well, I had read something a while back that that stated that these companies can do assessments to tell you when what, you you what kind of damage you're looking at, how much it's going to cost to do that. Now, I can't speak for boilers and chillers and physical plants, but as far as, like, um, you know, the kitchen, um, the um, the arena area, what improvements need to be made, if it's ADA accessible, and how do you comply with those kinds of laws? That's the kind of assistance they they kind of told um, they kind of state that they can do, and give you like an idea of what the facility needs are. So, okay, I'd like to move for approval then. Second. Got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall? Yes. Marlon Coleman? No. Wayne Johnson? Yes. Leanne Langston? Yes. Ivory Van? Yes. Derek Reed? No. Mayor Coburn? Yes. Motion carries. Item number nine. nine. Consider approval of a facility management agreement with Sports Facilities Management LLC to provide ongoing operation and management services for the Love Hat Box Sports Complex or take other necessary action. And that one would be Mr. Wilkerson. But before we get to that, let me say, too, that we've got three people in the audience that like to speak to this item. Would we like Mr. Wilkerson to go first, and then we will hear them before we have further discussion? Or what's yes. your pleasure? Why don't we let them talk first, and then he could maybe address some of their questions if they have questions. That's good. good I like that. that. Okay. Good job, Leanne. Uh, Mike Murray. <laughs> Step to the microphone, please, sir. Give us your name uh, and your address, and you will have five okay. minutes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, my name is Mike Murray. I live at 306 Drexel Plates here in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I'm here today to address uh, some of the, the, the event that we're trying to outsource our complex hat box love field out there. We have some concerns. Of course, we don't have everybody here tonight, but we have several that are here. We as uh, parents, coaches, have concerns on how we're trying to outsource this to some someplace in Florida. You know, uh, we'd like to keep that here in in Muskogee. We're looking at at, at our children. We're not looking at uh, anything outside that. We're wanting to keep everything here for our children to give them a good activity. We're looking for you at the council to table this until. Uh, next month, so we may be able to prepare something to present to you to maybe allow us give you some kind of uh, action as well. Uh, 
with them outsourcing to this Florida base, I mean, you're looking to spend $144,000 a year on this, and we, we don't even spend $144,000 on it now. Um, there's a lot of people, and I, I've seen comments in, of course, our Daily Phoenix, that this all was discussed with some people out there, and I'm, I'm here to assure you that it was not discussed. I'm the president of Green Country Girls Softball, uh, and I didn't know about it until we read it in the paper. Uh, we average two to four nights a week out there at that f softball field for the girls. We have ages from four all the way up to ten and under that play out there Monday nights in the fall league, and then we make up on Thursday night if we have a rain delay. But we're out there two to four four nights a week. We have grandparents. We have great-grandparents. We have aunts. We have uncles. We have moms, dads, single moms out there that come out and try to present an activity for their for their children and have a good, clean uh, place to uh, uh, have play softball. Our main thing is to keep it here in the city of Muskogee. I don't know what you've thought about if we outsource this to Florida or wherever it's going to be. Uh, what's going to happen with, the, with the, the employees that are trying to keep it up? Uh, what, I mean, what are you going to do with them? We're looking at keeping it here, like I said. We want to keep it here in Muskogee. We want to keep it for our children. We want to keep it within this city. We don't need to be going to Florida. I don't even like Florida teams, much less anything else. I don't keep it here in Muskogee and the state of Oklahoma. So that's what we're looking to do. We want to be able to clean this place up to where we can bring other communities in to have tournaments here, bring revenue in for our hotels, our restaurants, but we have a lot of work to do out there. We have bathrooms that need to be cleaned. We need bathrooms that need to be upgraded. We've got areas that need shade. We've got a football field over there. That I went to a football game two weekends ago out there. It was 98 degrees, and you got grandmothers and great-grandmothers out there watching their grandchildren play, and they're sweating like crazy. We're not investing back in here, but we need to take over our own. We don't need to be outsourcing to have somebody else come in and tell us what we need to do. You're going to end up coming in, doing all this stuff to your field. Then you're going to start charging the families to come into it. There's so many things that we're, that's going to happen and what we're looking at. But the main thing is, let's keep it here in Muskogee. Let's take care of our own kids and don't give it to somebody outside that we don't even know nothing about. And that's what we're looking to do. So we're hoping that you will delay your, your decision for a time frame of 30 days so we can put together something, parents, coaches, and things like that, and uh, hopefully come up with a proposal to maybe keep it within. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, Gary Lively. Same comment, sir. If you'd step to the microphone, give us your name, your address, and you will have five minutes, sir. My name is Gary Lively. I live at 4023 East 128th Street South here in Muskogee, Oklahoma. I've been a, been a resident of Muskogee my whole life. I've played ball on these fields my whole life. Uh, you know, we've really had trouble with the city really trying to maintain our fields. I've played on the fields. I've umpired on the fields. You know, uh, I don't see a company coming in here and taking care of it when we've got somebody around here that can take care of our fields. Uh, I really don't know anything that, you know, you could do. I mean, I'd be willing to even help, you know. I mean, the way I look at it, if you sit there and bring a company in, uh, pretty much that means Park and Recreation is going to lose some members, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, people's going to lose jobs if you bring somebody in to take care of our city parks. You know, that's the way I see it. But, uh I mean, I don't know exactly what else to say, but I'm standing behind the man over there, you know, <clears throat> supporting this without y'all trying to outsource this field. I think we ought to bring it up in a boat in the public, you know, whether or not this ought to be done. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Cindy uh, Bowie, your name and address, please, and uh, you will have five minutes. My name is Cindy Bowie, and I live at 2491 South 77th Street East here in Muskogee. Um, I'm here for the outsourcing issue. Um, I was raised, I was born and raised here in Muskogee. I played ball from when I was four years old all the way through high school. Um, I was a member of one of Muskogee High School state championship teams. Um, I know what it's like 
what a field and what a softball complex should be like. I know what draws those people in. And I have an eight-year-old daughter, and I have coached her since she was four on a t-ball team. We're now at second year, eight and under. We play competitive ball. We travel. We play league here in Muskogee. And our fields do have some issues that do not bring in people. But what I do know now that I'm on the board at Green Country Girls Softball, um, all we seem to do is pay out money. We don't ever get anything invested into our facilities. So an average for a league fee is $75 per girl. $75 covers them to pay in our league. With that money, we pay for our umpires and we pay for trophies for the end of the season. Everything else goes to the city to take care of fields that we can't play on if it rains for a week because they're not taken care of properly. Um, there have been no improvements on our softball complex in the last four to five years since I've been back to the complex. Um, just minor things. We don't need big things. You know, $12,000 a month to go to an outsourcing company somewhere else who they get a cut of the money, who will then pay somebody here in our city that has our children's best interest in mind, that then cuts into what we actually can help to better our facilities. Our facility doesn't need a lot. The bathrooms, everything is actually there. We need a plumber to come out and fix a couple of toilets. We need a maintenance guy to come out and readjust a few of the door hinges. We need some paint. We need a cleaning of the concession stand. We need the concession stand back in our control where we can actually provide something for you know, our kids and the spectators that come out. We need some shade. There's no shade. The fields are great. It's a great area. It's huge. There's huge potential. We're just not using it. But a fraction of that $12,000 a month, just a fraction to update a little bit of what we have, we need some shade. We would like to have netting between the fields for the foul, for the foul, foul balls that come, that come astray. Um, you know, nothing major, but just a little bit and somebody who actually takes care of the fields properly, we know what will bring in people. We know how to get tournaments into our facilities, but it's just we're just not given the opportunity to actually better our facilities. Uh, we actually have things in this area that we feel like we can help. We have people who are always looking for community service. You have high, kids in high school who need community service to put on their resumes, to put on their college applications. You have people who are made to give community service. Um, we have a VOTEC down the road who has multiple classes that are always looking for options to you know, perform to perfect those tasks that they're learning. They have a grounds, I have a list here, of some of the things that I thought were good through the VOTEC that may be an option. Um, they have um, a sports medicine class. They have an instructional coach class. They have carpentry, electricity, marketing. They can market those tournaments that we want to hold. They can market our leagues to get people in. Um, they have welding to do some of our fin minor fence repair. Um, building and grounds committee to help come in and take care of some of our facilities. So there are options we have um, that we just, we feel like there are people in our community that are willing to take that responsibility to do what's right and to get, you know, things right for our children. All right, thank you. Thanks for your input. Mr. Wilkerson. Um, with regards to the management uh, proposal agreement that we presented to um, you last Tuesday, uh, we've been in negotiation with the company and there's been several items that we've come to an agreement on. It's not exactly finalized, but we think intent the, the intent of the entire agreement is, is proposed to the, the scope of services that they intend to do. I'd be happy to try to... Uh, if I could interrupt you, Mark. Yes. Um, there are three, uh, as Mark said, we have been in negotiations with them to work out the uh, contract that was presented. There are three items that are non-substantive items um, that we are currently uh, working toward a resolution. Uh, the first being the indemnification clause that has been presented in the contract. Under Oklahoma law, of course, that uh, the city cannot indemnify a third party 
and we had a telephone conversation to advise them of that. However, they've requested some additional information relating to that, and particularly the Attorney General's opinion, uh, which relayed uh, that fact, which I told them I would present to them, and they're going to take it to their legal counsel. Uh, the second thing is uh, naming uh, the management company as an additional insured on our liability policy. As you all know, we're uh, insured through Oklahoma Mutual Assurance Group, which is a pooling agreement, OMAG, and uh, their terms and conditions uh, prohibit uh, adding an additional insured that is not a governmental entity. Uh, and so uh, we also discussed that with uh, the management company, and they have requested that we send them uh, a letter to that effect so that they can also uh, discuss that with their attorney. Uh, the final item is the uh, termination clause. Um, we did uh, recommend a reduction of the termination fee from a six-month severance package to 90 days. Uh, during our conversation, they did not seem to think that that was going to be a problem, uh, but still they wanted to actually look at the actual language as to how we drafted it uh, to come back uh, before you all. Um, and so we're very close. None of the substantive items that relate to the actual operations are at issue. Those were related to uh, – those were uh, based in the agreement that was submitted on Tuesday, and none of those have changed. We've made no changes. Uh, the only thing is those three items which relate to legal issues uh, and then the 90-day uh, uh, period uh, reduction in the termination fee, which is a, a business point. Um, what we – what Mark and I were going to uh, recommend is that um, – you will authorize the city manager to finalize the negotiations, and upon legal approval of those uh, things that we've I've just addressed, to authorize the mayor and city clerk to execute the agreement. Well, Mark, can you can you talk about the employees? How the employees will be dealt with that work in that cost? Uh, I mentioned that the last time here that the uh, in the agreement the uh, all the. Um, their original proposal was all this all the employees would be uh, employees of S SFM uh, sports facilities management uh, we in turn uh, countered with the proposal that the three full-time employees that we have out there remain as city employees remain as park and recreation employees but all the seasonal staff will become their employees um, seasonal staff include, would include field uh, maintenance type workers and concession operations with regards to the concessions that was mentioned the, this SFM will uh, manage and operate the concessions as well. And those three, and I would point out, in those three, uh, those three full-time employees, they were specifically identified to be kept uh, within the contract, and they were <coughs> identified not by name, of course, but by employee identification number, just for purposes of memorializing what we discussed. So, will they work still out at Love Hat Box, or will they? I mean, those three employees. Yes, sir. Under SFMAs or whatever. Under their supervision no, or under ours? No. They'll be under our supervision. We'll identify what responsibilities. There's still going to be uh, uh, facilities, uh, maintenance, still be a responsibility of the city and the parks department. Um, uh, they'll probably s – we'll identify the types of things that we will continue to do with our full-time employees and then the things that will be seasonal employees. For example, probably uh, ball field preparation will, will be the seasonal responsibility under the under – the, uh, direction of the management of the manager out there so a lot of this is still let be worked out we'll have to develop a working uh, a business plan a working plan a budget with all that all of which is going to come back to you for approval because okay. that's kind of what I was confused it says the the man the owner hereby grants to the manager the operation and maintenance of all physical and mechanical facilities necessary for and related to the operation maintenance and management of the facility I mean that sounds like they're doing the whole ball of wax not just seasonal piece if I'm reading what yep. I'm reading it that's, that's accurate but there are, I think what Mark's position is that there are some other um, uh, maintenance related things such as at Hammers. River Country which was not included in the mm -hmm. contract right. where they could be more utilized well is that not necessarily uh, River Country but you know we're we've got all kinds of facilities and activities going out there and it's not all on the ball field uh, in the ball field so uh, there's a lot of responsibility. We're, we're going to also be trying to develop a 300-acre complex, and so there's going to be lots of things that our employees okay. can do, besides uh, being, you know. But, but the issue is, is that we we do we want to we want we for certain want our full-time employees to remain with the city, okay. to remain on, and I want them to remain with the Park and Recreation Department, 
there's plenty of things that we we can use them to, to do. Uh, but the but those employees that are going to be under this under the supervision of the management team need to be their employees. So will that mean that if I'm the league director of the softball, baseball, football, then I'm going to go to the managers, management facility people, and say, "Hey, my fields aren't prepped right," that sort of stuff. Yes. I mean, that's that's going to be their contact. Yes. Uh, yes. I'm not. There probably still will be things that'll be the responsibility of the parks department, but there'll be. I would assume most of the things will be the responsibility of the management. Now, okay. and I'm just addressing some of what they had that they want some things done to the bathrooms. The, I know the fields are cut where we've drug them, and then we've basically turned the infills into ponds. I know some of the irrigation doesn't work because we've done that. Are we going to do that before they come in, and, or are we going to no. expect them to do that? I'm, no. I'm just asking. Well, I think we'll do it together. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of these items have to have uh, need funding to be to, to be addressed. Uh, CIP, we approved the five hundred thousand dollars to bring uh, hat box improvements out there. So, I would hope that we will use that uh, CIP money to address some of these some of these issues. But the SFM will be experts in this field, so they will help us determine what it is we need to do and get it done. Well, I'm excited about bringing somebody in that can bring us some new tournaments and some new blood and some new tax revenue. So I'm excited, but I want to make sure that we've we're taking care of our employees. Apparently, uh, I guess the next piece is is we set fees for all the for the use of that facility. Is that not correct? Yes, sir. It's my understanding this new group is going to be able to set fees. Or does that mean we're going to suspend those those fees? To set fees with our approval was my understanding. Right. Is that not right? I think it's all with, with our approval. <clears throat> okay. Everything they do is with our approval. I'm just making sure we're, everybody's clear that, okay. Because those are set in Schedule A. Schedule, and those fees in Schedule A that we had a lot of discussion last time we raised those fees, those will still come back to us. So any, a lot of these improvements is, may, may not come on the backs of our local teams and that sort of stuff. Is that correct? Or I would think to so. I, we have five hundred thousand dollars in CIP that I hope will go a long ways towards <laughs> making whatever improvements it is that that really need oh, to be I done out there. No. Uh, no, we're five years away from increasing the fees, the user fees out there. It's eight dollars per game. Okay, well, that's everybody just one, pays. I think if you're a parent, you're kind of concerned what the user fees are going to be and that sort of stuff. I just think we need to put that to rest a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, one more question here, Mark. What is the interaction that this company is going to have with, like, me as a president of the Youth Football League? They will be the person that you will go to to schedule your fees, uh, schedule your <coughs> games, to schedule your tournaments, um, hopefully assist and promote your league and your um, um, How are they going to promote my league? Well, I don't know that. I, mean, I don't know that either because we promote ourselves in our league, and I don't – I'm, and this has been my whole process with this is, and the one reason I've been kind of balking on it, a baseball term for you, um, <laughs> is that I don't, they don't have a way that they can interact with my league and make it better. We already have a, com a f Indian Nation company that oversees our league. They can't interact with that. They can't govern us. They can't produ produce our rules for us. So I'm trying to figure out the interaction that they would have with us. I'm not, I don't know softball. My daughter would refuse to play, but probably because I hit her with softball. But anyway, <laughs> the deal is, is that I'm trying to figure out how they interact with me, how they're going to interact with my league and make it better. Because right now I have a good relationship with you, and I know where your phone number is. <laughs> I'm assuming they'll have a phone number in office. They'll be out there all the time. I can't. I can't speak for them. I'm, they were here uh, two, three weeks ago. The people that have called me, I've referenced. I've referred them to YouTube to go watch Jason Clements in his presentation. Uh, he 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 did an excellent job telling you what his company was going to do for us. I can't do that for you. I I don't really know what they do. I'll read to you what they say they're going to do. It's in the packet, and it's pr it's pretty extensive. But until they get here and they start doing it, uh, you know. Uh, it, well, I think what you're meaning to say is that all of these things that are being addressed by the council are going to be specifically identified in the business plan and the budget that they present. Yes. Okay. But 
but this is my issue. All hat box is to us is a rental facility. Is I mean, is that all they're going to continue to be with us? Because they're not going to be able to promote our tournaments, our football tournaments. Um, because INFC kids will not come and play in just any tournament. They, they're kind of like get, staying in the sanctioned group that we're in. And I'm telling you, if Muskogee wasn't in the INFC, they wouldn't come to my tournament at the end of every year. Dan, let me, let me throw in a thought or two. Because okay. you, you, know, you made, made mention of the what we have is a rental facility. Yeah. I'd ask Jean Kingston if she would run us a depreciation schedule for Hatbox. We have $4 million worth of improvements at Hatbox. With that $4 million worth of improvements, that excludes the land cost. So say the land cost was, you know, I don't know, $10 million, $5 million, whatever you want to say. That $4 million worth of improvements at Hatbox generated $76,725 in total gross revenue and concessions. That's not a very good return on investment for a, for a facility that we want to make available for the children of the community, for the parents of the community, for the grandparents of the community. And what I'm, what I'm thinking with this is maybe they have some ideas that we haven't explored mm -hmm. because the comment that they made when they were here was probably they can generate as much revenue or more revenue than their total expenses are. Well, that would be twice the amount that we've done, and we just had a stellar year with a 43% increase, and we're not even halfway to what their fee is. So my, my thought is, we're wasting an asset, potentially, that why wouldn't we look at a different way of doing it, a different way of promoting it, a different way of managing it, and a different way of pot potentially drawing in some additional teams to play. You know, Neil Hayes has done a fantastic job. Uh, of drawing in teams to play that we're not playing here. What would be wrong if we if we put that program forward, <coughs> continue to, added what uh, sports facility management could add to the program, add some CIP money to the program for facility improvements uh, that need to happen, we may find that we have a facility that could produce a half a million dollars a year in, in gross revenue. It may become a somewhat self-sustaining like the water park is now. Why would we not just want to look at that and go, wow, let's try that one time. If it doesn't work, we can always cancel the agreement, go back just like we are. Well, and, and it, Mayor, it, it, I, agree, I agree with yeah. those points, and I just want to establish that we still control the fee schedule. It, is that it will come back to us. They will propose it to us, and we will yes. vote on it. And I, right. I just want, want our local people to know that local the control is not going away completely to an outside company. Yeah. I think I've been advocating for years that we need to use Hatbox as a sports tourism facility. And I, I'm like the mayor. I think this is something we need to do. But we don't need to do it on the backs of our local citizens and the players and the teams. If this works, the fields will be, be much better at the end of the day, give them more tournaments they can come to and go to without travel expenses. So I think it's a win-win for everybody. And now that we looks like we're close to negotiating a 90-day termination clause, I see the downside risk is very minimal, quite frankly. I, I, I think this is something we've been needing to do for a long time for sports you know, tourism. A, a logical question to ask. Several of the things that have been brought up are certainly things that Mark's aware of. You know, we, I mean, you, Dan, you and I, Wayne, we've been out there and toured facilities and talked about this improvement and that improvement and things like that. Well, if those are things we can fix, fix them. I mean, and I'm not trying to be arrogant, but why haven't we already fixed them? Yep. And then let's invite people to come in and play at these at the facilities once we upgrade. Well, maybe we haven't given the attention to it that it needs, and at least this has drawn the attention to it that it deserves for a facility that I think would be worth 10 or $15 million. Yeah. Well, let me make a comment, if I, if I may, really quick here. Um, we're looking at a contract. If the council approves this contract, a one-year contract with a renewable and a 90-day termination clause, is that right, Roy? Correct. So just so you'll know that if we do enter into a contract, it's one year, one year renewable, 90-day termination clause. I caught that. Um, this is my one thing here, and this is 
a question. My league that I play in regulates the fee that I can pet charge at the gate. Um, that kind of puts me in a bind on certain things. Um, Why would it put you in a bind? This council that sits here votes on all those fees. Yes. So if we set the fee, they don't have any choice but to, but to manage it the way we've asked them to. Okay. I just want to make sure of that, though. I mean, because I can only charge so much per parent, per child, when they come into the gate regulated by the league that I'm in. If I have to, if I can't charge more and it does go up, then I'm kind of like, what is our fee for football? It's not $8. It's 10 isn't it? $8 per game. I thought ours was 10 Okay. Well, for tournaments, it's 10 Okay. So... I mean, that, and that's not um, bad. that doesn't change. You know, you still me, ultimately have the vote on that. I, I, I really don't see much of a difference with regards to the leagues. Uh, the leagues are, are going to are going to go to the management. They're they're going to manage the asset out there as opposed to park and recreation. And um, I think what they're bring, what they're really going to bring to is everything above and beyond the leagues. I mean, they're going to bring the facilities up to speed. They're going to make the concessions better. Uh, I would assume more efficient, more profitable. I mean, I think that's what they're trying to do is bring a business sense to a, a more of a business sense, I guess, to uh, to the sports complex. But, uh, you know, Neil Hayes is going to continue to be an operator and, and run tournaments out there. Green Country Girls Softball are going to continue to be the girls softball operator out there. The adult so football program and, 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 I mean, softball program and, and the youth football program, they're all still going to go to them just as though they, went to, they came to the city for uh, I think the types of things that they're going to do that they say, that, that they offer, is their expertise or, or the marketing, the business development, the, the planning, the, the vendor setup, the employee and volunteer recruitment, policies and procedures, all those types of things you heard him say when he was here that just knocked our socks off. You know, and I know that he's not here, and, and I'm trying to sell them, and I, I'm not. I just, that's, I'm, I don't work for them. But... Um, that's where we were a few weeks ago. I was trying to point that out. I, I, uh, I'm sorry that the uh, the softball association wasn't here that Tuesday that we first that, that he was here to to ask those questions. But Andy yeah. mentioned that he <coughs> that company would go after sponsorship income. Is yeah, what he said. that's part, a, part, a part gap of, right now that we're not going part of what the relationship with the, the leagues too and the Indian nations in particular may be is that he, they'll package all of the activities that are happening out there and and uh, sell uh, sponsorships to national sponsorships and they'll say we've got uh, Indian nations football plan out here and there's so many games there's so many people coming and they're going to package that with uh, some other sports complex maybe here in Oklahoma or Texas and they and, and we're going to you know they're going to direct money to us through that sponsorship because of their expertise and their leverage with other complex. I mean, if it's a national deal, you're either going to get, you're going to get, if you want Atlanta, you're going to get Muskogee too, because we're going to charge you X amount of dollars and we're going to put your sign in Muskogee. So, I mean, that's, that's one of the, that's one of the examples that I heard of how they can help bring dollars to, to our complex. Refresh my memory again about how we're funding the, the 12,000 per month. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, we um, we um, we are taking the twelve thousand dollars per month out of hotel motel tax and economic development fund, and then the um, I guess I guess what the only thing that gives me pause. I agree with everything that a lot of my colleagues have said about the positive benefits, but I'm at the point where when we get something to work on, a lot of times it's sounding like. Here's what we're going to work on, and then we're going to come back with a budget. Here's what we're going to work on, and we're going to come back with the finalized plan. And I think that's what's given pause to a lot of uh, questions that are being asked by a lot of the residents and other people, that they never get the whole picture at one time. It seems to always be, if this, then that. Not directed at you directly. I'm just saying just the, the, the process. It's starting to really concern me. Well, this is uncharted territory, Counselor. Um, you, you know, this is the first for Muskogee, and you know, of course, you have to you have to address and try to you know deal with the community concerns. But you know, this these public-private partnerships 
um, they are becoming standard in a lot of city governments, not just here in Oklahoma, but nationwide. And so you're going to, you're going we're experimenting with things that are new to the city. And I, I would just say, let's keep an open mind about it. And, um, but it's definitely a city council decision. Okay. I'm open mind. I understand the definition of new. My concern is the process. That's what I said. Well, I didn't was question explaining. whether or not it was new. I didn't question how things work in Muskogee. My question uh, was, or my comment was, is getting frustrating with the process. Not at you, Mark. I'm just stating that for the record. I need clarity on the item as well. And this kind of goes back to what Dan had mentioned on the last agenda item. We're saying that this company is going to come and do this great thing for Muskogee, but also we just heard a list of things that's going to need to be repaired before these great things can happen out at Headbox. So have we considered, you know, is that going to come out of the city's money or is this company going to come out and repair? Because if not, like you were saying, a big chunk of money, and we still got a lot of repairs that we got to address. It's so going to have city's city money. money mm -hmm. Either way, whether they do it or we do it or we both I'm just do saying it. the management company is not going to be able to bring us a big investment until we do these things, and we're sitting up here saying that we don't have a direction right now because we don't have the well, money. Well, uh, I, I wouldn't say that's true. Um, I, I, I think that the management company could do a lot without with, – without without a lot of improvements but but unlike the Civic Center we have a source of money right now or not right now but soon that we can spend as capital improvements to the sports complex so you know and we're anxious to get that moving forward and I think that these this company being <clears throat> specialists in what they do I'm really not familiar with their management side of it I, I know I'm not quite sure exactly how they're going to come in and perform on the management side of it but they also design these facilities and, 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 uh, for, for communities. And so I look at them as an, probably one of the premier national experts in, in facility design that can come in and immediately say, this is what we're going to do right here, right here, right here to improve our existing facilities. Who oversees? Also White Hutchinson's recommendation that we have conversation with? Yes, them? sir. And what did they recommend? White Hutchinson? Yeah. Well, they recommended we go to sports facility advisories to do an, an assessment of our facilities. And it was later that we found out that they do management of the facilities that we had some conversations about the third-party operation. So Who they recommended that, and they, they, they only recommended them. They didn't know of anybody else that they could recommend to do that kind of work. Who oversees this part of the parks and rec right now, the facility rentals and all that kind of stuff? The use of the facilities, -wise. upkeep, all that. Employee-wise? Mm -hmm. Well, we have a sports facility supervisor that's a maintenance. We have three full-time maintenance people, and the sports facility maintenance person is the, is the main person. And then there's a facilities manager that kind of oversees the, uh, the buildings. Uh, then the, uh, the, the agreements are all done in the office with uh, Carson Lynch, my assistant, and myself, and various staff members. And how many employees does that entail? I'm just trying to figure out. Will they go to work for the the no. management company? No, sir. Yeah, the three the three manage the three positions um, got their titles. Concessions manager. No, sir. They're they're sports they're maintenance personnel. One's a supervisor, and the other two are lead lead. Uh, Workers. The three permanent, the three permanent. Three permanent, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm going to move for Further approval. Further questions, comments? I'm going to move for approval. Okay. Got a motion? Second. second. A motion and a second? Is, uh, hold on just a second. <laughs> Is that the, uh, are you moving to approve the motion that I recommended? which is to yes, uh, authorize the city manager to finalize <laughs> negotiation subject to legal approval and then authorize the city man excuse me the mayor and city clerk to execute. yes sir thank you i like to say something before we do this i like to thank the citizens for coming up here mm -hmm. and uh, voicing your opinion and no matter how this vote comes out i appreciate that because like i say i know how you feel to be sitting out there in that seat to give the council uh, ideas because i've done it many a time myself and I want to thank y'all for coming up here and doing that. I really do. <clears throat> we have a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. No. Marlon Coleman. No. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. No. Derek Reed. No. 
Mayor Coburn. Yes. Okay, 5-4. 5-4. Four. Four. It is uh, the motion passes. Item number 10, please. Consider approval of the lowest bid from Waste Research Incorporated in the amount of $245,860 for the purchase of two cabin chassis refuse truck with the 20-yard 20 rear load packer body for the fiscal year 2014-2015 or take other necessary action. Robert Swepston. Good evening. Uh, as mentioned last week, we went out for bids for two new sanitation trucks. Uh, we received 10 bids from four companies. Uh, Mr. Jones pointed out that six of those bids did come from one company. They were of various uh, cabin chassis makeups with different type packer bodies on it, so it gave us a good variety uh, to choose from, but we still had four separate companies bidding on those, just to clarify that. The lowest bid was from Waste Research for $122,930 each, or a combination price of $245,860. The lowest bid was for the Freightliner cabin chassis with the Cummins engine and the Packmore body. Uh, we have used waste research and Packmore bodies for many, many years and have received good, if not great, service from them over the years. The Freightliner cabin chassis with the Cummins engine combination has been the uh, last six sanitation trucks that we've purchased, along with several of the uh, dump trucks and other heavy equipment type stuff. And we've received good, if not great, service from them as well. Um, there was a trade-in option of $15,000. We uh, recommend not exercising that trade-in option and keeping the uh, two trucks. One is a spare backup truck to assist in the uh, maintenance on the vehicles, and the other one simply for parts. Uh, this current combination fits right into our fleet uh, maintenance program, so the maintenance is uh, standardized because this does um, go right along with what we currently have. I would like to mention that this is to replace a 2000 model and a 2004 model truck that will be taken out of service. Um, replacement schedules are recommended three to five years on sanitation trucks, so the two that we're taking out have basically exceeded their life expectancy and we're having to put more money into those than what they're <coughs> currently worth. Uh, so it's costing us a lot of money just to keep those in service. Public Works and Finance Committee um, have reviewed this and they support uh, this recommendation. The funds are budgeted in this month or this year's solid waste collection improvement account. So we recommend approval of the low bid to waste research for the $245,860. Okay. Mr. Swepson, last week when I cast my no vote, I wasn't clear that I did appreciate the work that your department had done in researching this and being certain that we purchased trucks. My only concern, as I mentioned part of it last week, was a series of big ticket financial items ahead of some other priorities that we haven't resolved yet within the city. And so while I certainly do support the fact that I want our workers to have the equipment that they need, I'm much more comfortable when we resolve the issue of being able to give them new pay versus a new vehicle. Um, that You don't have to comment on that. Okay. <laughs> Other comments or questions? Move for approval. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion regarding? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Scully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. No. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. No. Derek Reed. No. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Uh, motion carries. Item number 11. And we have someone that would like to speak to this item. Uh, from the audience as well. Receive report, discuss, and take action on surplus property pilot program created by Resolution 2447. Mr. Tucker. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, uh, as this item was discussed in committee, I'll just briefly go over what uh, uh, the findings were from my report. Um, during the year of the pilot program, there were 16 properties that were sold, um, and this uh, with a total uh, sales of $9,912.50. Uh, comparable to last year, uh, the number of properties were 43, uh, with a total sales of $7,009. Uh, in committee, it was my recommendation uh, that the program be ceased. Uh, however, the uh, committee recommended and provided direction to the city attorney uh, to bring forth an amended ordinance, uh, which allowed for direct sale um, for the sum of $350 to an applicant of any parcel of less than 7,200 square feet. 
and to continue with the additional notice provisions and competitive bidding for parcels in excess of 7,200 feet. Now, uh, if that remains the uh, will of the council, then I don't need a, a motion on this. Um, I consider myself directed, and I'll bring that uh, uh, ordinance forward. Okay. Discussion or comment? Uh, ordinance or resolution, Roy? Uh, ordinance. Would you repeat that um, you talked about less than 7,200 square feet? Mm -hmm. uh, can you repeat that part again, please? Sure. Um, we allowed for the uh, the proposal, the direction was to allow the direct sale uh, in the amount of $350 to an applicant of any parcel of less than 7,200 square feet uh, and to continue with the additional notice provisions and competitive bidding for parcels in excess of 7,200 feet. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Comments or questions? Entertain a motion. Move for approval. If needed. No, we have someone who's speaking. Ah, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Cedric Johnson, item number 11 gives your name and address, sir, and you will have five minutes. I am Cedric Johnson, and I live at 316 North 27th Street in Muskogee, Oklahoma. As I understand, I, I thought the attorney, city attorney had recommended that, that we go back to a previous manner of uh, disposal of uh, tax delinquent properties and I agree with that part of it I don't agree with the bidding part now I'm aware of a person who had maintained some property right next to his and then when that property came up uh, on a tax sale and it became a bidding process then a person from out of the city with deep pockets outbeated him. Now, somewhere in here, a squatter's law should have taken place. And when the city is bidding property, a city is actually going into the real estate business. And I don't think that would pass muster if somebody filed on it. So I think it should go back to first come first serve, no bids, and no additional fees. You're going to dispose of that property for what is owed on it, the taxes that's owed on it, rather than using that as a source of additional revenue. That has a tendency to cause um, property to go that, that could be redeveloped if that person can get it at a reasonable price. But when you tax additional stuff on it, then that person is going to back off. I have purchased some properties through uh, the delinquent tax sales. And as I understood it, the original owners have a certain amount of time to redeem that property. And, of course, in some of it they did, and, and in some they didn't because this was prime property, as in Muskogee County and in Wagner County. But uh, I, I don't think we should do any additional beatings. Dispose of the property for what is owed on it and delinquent taxes only. And if there's another administrative fee attached to that, uh, that, there may be some administrative fees attached to that. But that's the way I think it should be done in a fair manner. So that's the only part of yours that I didn't agree with is the additional beating. Thank you, sir. Any additional comments or questions? I guess my question is, is the delinquent taxes, that's, that's a county function, not a city function. Yeah, by the time, that's, that's correct. Thing. By the time we actually get the property, um, th how we get the property is they go to the June and the October sales <clears throat> for the um, uh, amount of the delinquent, delinquent owned taxes. Um, when, they're, when they do not are not bought mm -hmm. at either of those sales, then the county takes possession of those uh, in lieu of any additional taxes. And so by the time that they're conveyed to us, there's nothing owed on them. And the $163 that we were selling them before uh, was uh, the, and the administrative 
fee at the time plus the filing fee of the deed. Okay, so there was, there was no profit on the uh, uh, prior ordinance. And as I said in my original report, the reason for that is we were simply a pass-through uh, from the county to the applicant uh, for the purpose of getting the property back on the tax sale so that in future years the taxes could be paid. Okay. And, and the county doesn't convey that property to us until we request. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. And I just hope that kind of clears that it up. Didn't a used bit. To, it didn't used to be that way, okay. um, but now <laughs> that is correct. They do. We do ask for it via letter, mm -hmm. but we don't do that until someone makes application. Okay. Otherwise, we have more property to take care of than we okay. want. I agree. Okay. So, Roy, what's the big jump? Uh, I guess I missed it. Why did we take such a large jump from the 163 that it was originally? That was a recommendation of the committee mm -hmm. uh, just to increase the fee because it was 163, uh, which was under the original ordinance, and then um, under the pilot program it was 263 to cover our costs for additional administrative expenses that were required from the notice. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think uh, the committee discussion was that we needed to go a little bit higher uh, up to 350. And so what, what, do you need a motion or? Uh, no, if, if the consensus of the, the body is that I'm still directed to uh, bring back that amended ordinance, then I, I just take that as direction and I'll bring back an amended ordinance which identifies that. However, if, if the consensus has changed, then yes, I would need a motion. Okay, if I don't hear anything motion-wise, then we're going to move to the next item. Number 12. Discuss and take action on a resolution declaring the property located between South 2nd Street mm -hmm. and South Main Street and West Southside Boulevard <coughs> in Kalamazoo as surplus property to the needs of the city, authorizing the conveyance of the property to Christine King and further accepting an adjoining parcel incorrectly conveyed. Mr. Tucker. Uh, thank you, Mayor members and, um, and members of Council. This is a, a little bit of a correction uh, based on something that occurred in uh, 2011. Uh, back then, uh, Ms. King had applied uh, through the surplus property program when then it was still $163, um, and it was uh, on property that was uh, adjoining to hers. Uh, when we prepared the legal descriptions uh, to convey the deeds, we actually conveyed her the north half um, of that parcel uh, when in reality she had applied for the south half. It was the, it was the north 54th that we deed, 54 feet that we deeded. She wanted the south 50th. Um, so, and this came to our attention because she got a notice from code enforcement that the property was that was in her name was not being properly maintained and so that's when we discovered that there had been an error um, what the resolution this time would be to propose is uh, to make that situation right um, in exchange for her conveying to us the property that was incorrectly conveyed to her uh, we will then convey to her the property she originally applied for uh, which is the property that she adjoins. And so if you look at the uh, uh, item with regard to the map that was attached, uh, you can see that there is a gap of property uh, between what she currently owns and what she um, had requested. And so we're simply asking for approval of that so we can make that correction in this instance. Move for approval. approval. Second. second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. Deputy Mayor David Jones, yes. James Gully, yes. Dan Hall, yes. Marlon Coleman, yes. Wayne Johnson, yes. Leanne Langston, yes. Ivory Van, yes. Derek Reed, yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes, motion carries. Item number 13. Consider approval of a resolution declaring the property on the north corner of 9th Street and Emporia Street as surplus property and authorize the sale of the property to Turning Point New Deliverance Church in the amount of $263. Mr. Tucker again. Uh, Mayor, members of council, this is uh, uh, another application that came to us under the original pilot program. Um, and this property was, as is uh, stated, at 9th and Peoria. Uh, the lot size is a buildable size. It's 6,958 feet. Uh, which, if the setbacks are met, is a buildable size. Um, it is classified as uh, D. Uh, I believe that's multifamily. Uh, and uh, the applicant does own property that is abutting to this. Um, the $263 application fee has been deposited, um, and so I'm happy to answer any questions, but I recommend approval uh, for the direct sale to Turning Point New Deliverance Church. Move for approval. Second. The motion. Motion in a second. Any discussion? 
Call. Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Gully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Uh, yes, and the motion carries. And we will now have uh, recognition of citizens wishing to speak. Stephen Ezell, please step to the microphone, please, sir. And you will have three minutes. Give us your name and your address, please. Thank you, sir. Stephen Ezell, uh, 6121 South 6th Street East, Muskogee, Oklahoma. Um, I had been following, uh, as probably many of you probably have, the events in, uh, that have occurred in Ferguson, Missouri, with very, very great concern. And I have been asking myself, what if something like that was to happen here with, like, say, widespread unrest? I asked Deputy Chief Reggie Cotton this question. Would we have the resources to be able to respond to such a situation, even of a limited duration? He said, a limited duration, yes, but longer, probably not. Now, one of the things that I have been thinking about a long time that I think would actually very much benefit the members of this city council. Now, I know there are two members in this audience, uh, Chief Derek Tatum and Chief Rex Eskridge, who have taken these courses, quite even possibly uh, Mr. Hall himself, and that is ICS courses through uh, FEMA. Now, the good thing is, is that these particular courses are free like ICS course 100, 200, 300, 400, 700, 800. Now, the first two and the last two of these courses can be done online at your own time. The middle two, 300 400, are resident courses. which take like one or two days. The good thing is this is something that Jimmy Moore could actually put on. And I believe that for you guys, it's, it's not to try to t teach you to take – the place of Chief Tatum or Chief Eskridge, but to have you become better familiar with the incident command system and how the resources that are that are governed by it would be implemented and allotted during a major emergency, like say, like the ice storm we had back in 2007, or say, like for example, a mass casualty incident, like say a bomb blast or a school shooting. Mm. Now, our current city manager has been all for the improvement of education among our employees. I believe also our city council members should be educated, better educated too, and future ones too. And I also propose that same to. Um, Mr. Payne, who just um, who who is not here with us, and other um, and this county commissioners, because well, in this day and time, the more you know, the better off you are. Because wouldn't it be good to have this knowledge and not use it, than to not have it and not know what to do in case you need it? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Uh, we will now go to item number 14. Consider an executive session to discuss and take possible action on the following. A, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local Number 57, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. B, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local Number 2465, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. C, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma <coughs> Statutes, Consider convening an executive session to discuss negotiations with the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 95, and if necessary, take appropriate action in open session. Now, I entertain a motion for executive session. Move we convene into executive session. Second. second. And a motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call. 
Deputy Mayor David Jones. Yes. James Gully. Yes. Dan Hall. Yes. Marlon Coleman. Yes. Wayne Johnson. Yes. Leanne Langston. Yes. Ivory Van. Yes. Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Coburn. Yes. Motion carries. We will now consider ourselves in executive session. If you would clear the council chamber, please. I know. We'll now reconvene out of executive session. Roll call, please. Mayor Bob Coburn. Here. James Gully. Here. Dan Hall. Present. Marlon Coleman. Here. David Jones. Here. Wayne Johnson. Here. Leanne Langston. Here. Ivory Van. Here. Derek Reed. Here. Mr. Tucker. Uh, item 14A, uh, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss the status of uh, negotiations with the International Association of Firefighters, Local 57. After being fully briefed on the status of those negotiations, uh, I don't believe any action is necessary at this time. Item B, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss those same negotiations with the, uh, the excuse me, the negotiations with the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Local 2465. After being fully briefed on the status of ongoing negotiations, uh, no action is necessary at this time. Item 14C, pursuant to Section 307B2, Title 25, Oklahoma Statutes, the City Council did convene an executive session to discuss the negotiations with uh, the Fraternal Order of Police, Lodge Number 95. After being fully briefed on the status of those ongoing negotiations, no action is necessary at this time. Mayor? That concludes our executive session items, and that concludes our agenda. Thank you.